Hello, this morning we are going to introduce you to RAST, which is a rapid annotation using subsystem technology. This is a very useful tool to analyze microbial genomes if you have no prior knowledge of bioinformatics. So the RAST system operates by managing your data. You need to upload your genome data into RAST as an assemble file. And once it's uploaded, the system will annotate the data and pre present you with a graphical representation of the data. So I have uploaded some genomes into the system. And as you can see, the green bar indicates that the job has been completed successfully. Now, generally, RAS requires around a day to maybe a few hours to complete a single genome annotation. It depends on the server speed as well as the number of jobs which are currently in the queue. So let's look at Bacillus species, which is one of the genomes that I have annotated at this server. So to view the genome, you click here at View Details. So the server has now completed this job, which was done some time ago. For this demo, we are going to view the completed or annotated genome using the seed viewer. So to view your genome, which has been annotated, you click on the seed viewer over here. So we now have the annotated genome, which is a very good graphical representation here. So let me go through this one by one. <coughs> so the first designation you can see is that it's a genome species. So I have classified it as bacteria. So I don't know the exact genus, but this is a bacillus species based on a microbial observation. So as you can see, the genome size is 5458152 bases, which is approximately the size of a bacillus species, which gives an indication that your genome sequencing is, has been successful or adequate. You see your gen, uh, GC content, which is around 35.6, which is also similar to bacillus species. And then we can see that our assembly is consisting of one contig. Now, generally with bacteria, when you obtain a single contig, it means that there is no plasmid. However, when you do your wet lab, you need to ascertain whether there is a plasmid by using a, a plasmid min, a lysis mini prep to determine whether your genome actually has a plasmid or not. So we can see that the number of coding sequences are 8,686. This includes the non-coding RNAs as well. So they may be classified as coding sequences. This is one of the things which you have to look for into more detail. And the number of RNAs are 123, which is an adequate representation of the genome of Bacillus. So by observing this entire set of parameters, one can determine if one's genome sequencing is complete or incomplete. Okay, let's look down at the subsystem category. As you can see, a total of 4,555 of these subsystems are not in the RAST server, whereas 48% of these annotated genes are in the subsystem server. So this is a graphical representation of the genes which are distributed by category. As you can see, they are distributed according to their metabolic pathways as well as their functional relationship with the cell, the bacterial cell. So the first thing I look for is the cell wall and capsule. So let's look at this. So as you can see, gram-negative cell wall components are zero and gram-positive uh, gram cell wall components are 45. So this is definitely a gram-positive bacterium. Now this parameter is very useful to determine whether your genome has been contaminated with other bacterial species species. For instance, if you have a contaminated genome, you will have definitely have some gram-negative cell wall components. Okay. The next thing you look at is virulence, disease and defense. So you can look at bacteriosins 
if you are looking uh, mining the genome for bacteriocins for recombinant expression studies and you can also look for resistance to antibiotics and toxic compounds if you are looking for antibiotic profiling of pathogens so in st for in this case you can see there is a resistance to fluoroquinone so there are 11 subsystems related to fluoroquinone resistance and this is a soil microbe which it was isolated from uh, acid mine drainage site so you have arsenic resistance subsystems and we have systems for cop copper homeostasis as well as resistance to chromium compounds so this gels in well with the hypothesis of this organism being one which can resist toxic concentrations of metal ions. Okay, we look further at nitrogen metabolism. For instance, in nitrogen metabolism, you can see that this microbe can assimilate ammonia and in denitrification, it has a denitrifying reductase gene cluster. So this gives an, int int uh, an overview of the ability of the organism to utilize nitrogen as well as to degrade uh, nitrogen containing compounds, which is a good indication when you're developing media or doing lab studies. So this is an overview of the RAST annotation system. Now le let's look more deeply for instance, you have a resistance to vancomycin. So click on this. It will show you the subcategory and the genes associated with vancomycin resistance. So to find out the actual gene location, you click on the systems spreadsheet, subsystem spreadsheet, and then you can look at the bacillus species Y3, which is our target organism. So it contains the vancomycin B type resistance protein, VANW, which is one of the reasons why it may be resistant to vancomycin. However, you still need to validate this by carrying out a lab test. So I click on this icon for vancomycin resistance, and you will see the gene organization for instance showing the five prime and three prime or three prime five prime orientation as you can see this shows you the gen g specific genes associated with the actual gene for vancomycin resistance so as you can see it has compared this with bacillus and tracis okay so you have a comparison and it shows you the gene order as well as the location of the specific gene now in order to view the gene for, for instance, if you need to sequence the genome or resequence the genome, or if you are interested in uh, heterologous protein exp expression of this particular gene, what you need to do is click on the sequence, and you will obtain a view of the sequence itself. Now, you can develop PCR primers for this region or develop a synthetic gene construct based on this particular gene and clone and express it in E. coli and assess whether this particular phenotype has been transferred into E. coli. So this is a short overview of how you can use the rapid annotation using subsystem technology, RAST, to curate a bacterial genome. Thank you for watching.